for our readings today, there are, were two options that we could have picked from. Um, the first one was from uh, Sirach, and it was all about how a father is placed in honor of his children and how his children have to, you know, do everything he asks and all that kind of stuff. And I thought, you know, as a father, I'm going to use this one, and I'm going to lay it on really thick and use all that kind of good stuff and make sure my kids do everything they're supposed to. But then when I read the second group, I'm like, Something in that really spoke to me more, so I'll be preaching on the second, <laughs> second option of readings today. Uh, we'll start in the gospel. You know, it's a familiar story of uh, how Mary and Joseph left, and Jesus, 12 years old, he's left in the temple. They don't know he's there, um, and he comes back and, and uh, find him later with great anxiety. Uh, as a show of hands, any parents here, any of you ever left a child behind or lo lose a child? I have. Yeah. It was uh, my oldest son, George. He was about two years old. We were at uh, YMCA for a family night, swimming and having a lot of fun and all that kind of stuff. So uh, he and I went into the, the locker room and getting showered up and cleaned up and whatever. And I set him by the locker and said, you know, stay there. Don't go anywhere. Just ran off to the bathroom for a second. And when I come back, he's gone. I'm like, what the heck? You know, where did he go? So I'm looking all over the place. I'm looking in the showers, in the bathroom. I even went back to the pool. I'm like, where is this kid? You know, and then instantly these thoughts come to your mind like, oh, my gosh, somebody just grabbed George. You know, you, you don't know. You don't know if somebody took him or, or wherever. So I'm frantically looking at inside lockers all over the place. I'm like, where is George? Just worried as heck. Finally, I go out. Uh, the entrance of the locker room into the main hallway, and there he is just standing there like, you know, what's, <laughs> what's the big deal about it? It's like the relief of finally finding him. So I can relate a little bit to uh, what, what Joseph and Mary did there. But Joseph, Joseph and Mary left the Son of God, right? I mean, he's Jesus. He's the Son of God. How do you leave the Son of God behind and not keep track of where he is? But then if you read the second reading today where it talks about how we're all the sons and daughters of God. I think that's something that, as Catholics and Christians, that we kind of gloss over. Um, most of us were baptized as infants, and so we don't really think of it that way. But at our baptism, it's not, just an, it's not an initiation to a club, or we're not joining an organization when we are baptized, we are bapt into, baptized into Christ. And from that point on, we are a son and daughter of God. I mean, if you think about it and you think about how awesome that is, that the creator of the universe would say, you know what, I want you to be my son or I want you to be my daughter. And I, I will treat you like my son or my daughter. Um, I think that's something that, you know, it's just untapped. In, in our spirituality and the way that we live our lives. So as a son or a daughter, you could say, okay, we celebrate the Holy Family, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, and they're the example of the family. But in reality, we're all the Holy Family, right? Because we're all sons and daughters of God. Um, when we think of this baptism, I, you know, in the first reading, it was kind of long, and there's a lot of technical things about bowls and that kind of stuff, but there was a phrase at the end where Hannah, if we approach baptism this way, Hannah brought Samuel to the temple and said, I offer him to God. What God gave me, I'm giving back to God. And, he left, and she left Samuel there to live in the temple the rest of his life. So in reality, that's what we're doing in our baptism when we baptize our children and when we're trying to raise them. Um, and not just our children, our, our godchildren, our grandchildren, our nieces, our nephews, you know, everybody that we encounter, uh, we have an effect on them and how they live their life. Um, so we leave them to God. We give them to God. We, re we understand that this is God's child that I'm raising now. It's not mine anymore. It's God's. So how do I interact with them? We look at uh, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus as the model family, as the holy family. You know, like I talked in uh, one of my homilies before, a uh, Christian family is an is a image or a, a sacrament, a living symbol of the domestic church. So you have mother, father, child, you know, a vision of the, of the Trinity, and then you have Jesus at the center of it. 
So this is kind of the model of what you see in the Holy Family. And sometimes it's hard to relate, right? Because Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, well, Jesus was God, so there was no sin there. Mary was conceived immaculately, so she didn't know sin. So I imagine the arguments were pretty minor or pretty minimal or never existed in that family because they didn't have all the things that they had to deal with. But then again, they did have a lot. But if you look at it and you look at our families, you know, sometimes the images that we have of our experiences as we grow up, it, it kind of attains a little bit of, of what the, the perfect image is. So we could take our experiences in our family and we try to relate that to the Holy Family. It's like, you know, my family's not the best. I mean, we love each other and all that kind of stuff, but there's arguments. You know, there's division. Uh, there's things that we don't necessarily agree with. Um, some families have great crosses to bear, you know, separation and abuse and those sorts of things. So you look at that and you say, well, how could a family be holy? Because look at my family. Um, but we move past that. We realize that that's the example that we're trying to live for. As a father myself, trying to, you know, raise a children, a child, well, children, I have four, four children. Um, as a father and a deacon, I can kind of see how my behavior can taint their image of what a father is, what God as father, and what the church is as well as a, as a deacon. So I make mistakes. I do things. You know, I have a bad day at work, and you, you come home, and the kids are just wild, so you, you know, you yell quiet. <laughs> you know, we, I need some peace. I need this or that, or I'm doing, you know, playing games. I'm getting a little ruckus to start throwing stuff because I just got taken out, you know, that kind of stuff. It's like, well, what kind of a father, what kind of a deacon, or, you know, what, what are you? And it's like that those images can, can portray um, and can kind of taint uh, our image of God as father and what our whole family is. So we have to look past these perspectives and move past them and say, you know what, with God it is perfect. And even though p- parents try, you know, we all fail, we all fall short. Um, so what do we do as, as a parent or as a family um, to move past this, and how how do we still live up with our mission as a Christian that as a son and daughter of God, we have to live as a son and daughter of God and introduce others to God. Um, last week, Deacon Dave was talking about how 8% of uh, people in England, young adults, don't know who Christ is, have never heard of Christ, have no relationship with Christ. As part of a family, that's what we're charged to do, is introduce the generations after us to who Christ is. So how do we learn, or how do we teach, or how do we pass that on? I think uh, we pass it on through example more than just talk, right? I can can spout all kinds of doctrine. Um, I can do all kinds of things and tell you everything I know about the church, but that's not really going to move you. That might move your head, and you might learn a few things, but that doesn't make you grow in your relationship with Christ. People look at your example and say, well, you said this, but you're doing that. So you say you're a Christian, but you're not acting as a Christian, so what does it mean? Uh, we have to show people that it, it means something. It, it motivates us. It drives our lives. Um, so using the model that Jesus gave us, when, when they found him in the temple, they said he was uh, asking them questions. And When Jesus was asking questions, he wasn't doing this because he didn't know the answers. Asking questions is a way that uh, is a teaching method. So he'll ask a question and then, so what you do is then the person thinks about it, and as they're thinking about it, they kind of internalize that and uh, learn from what they're thinking. Um, So as a child of God, I want to ask a few questions of all of us. Are we, you know, evaluate where we are spiritually? So... I'm going to ask a question, give you a couple seconds to think about it, and I want you to think in the perspective of, I'm a son of God, I'm a daughter of God. What does this mean to me? And then, again, think of, how, how is this an example to everybody around me? So a little self-evaluation of where we are. So start with the basics. Have I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior? Have I opened my heart to the Holy Spirit 
and allow the Holy Spirit to change my life and to motivate me. Do I have a relationship with Jesus? Do I pray often? Do I read scripture? Does Jesus know me and do I know Jesus? Do I know my faith? Am I learning my faith? Do I participate in, a, in programs like Alpha, where that man is you, read scripture, go to Bible studies, Mass? Do I know and learn my faith? Do I put my faith into action? Does the Holy Spirit motivate me to show my love for Christ to others by visiting those on the margins, the homeless, the sick, those who can't come to Mass? Do I pray for them if I can't visit them? Do I apologize to people when I make a mistake? Do I seek forgiveness and reconciliation for my sins? And when people harm me, do I forgive them? And have I accepted the love of Christ? Even, even though the focus today is on the Holy Family, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, we're all his sons. We're Jesus' brother. We're sons and daughters of God. So do we think of ourselves as part of the Holy Family as well? Today when you receive Eucharist, I suggest, you know, pray for the normal things, strength, for perseverance, uh, for the things that are harming you in your life, for the healing that you need. But also think, Jesus, my brother, you're always there for me. I know that no matter what I do, you'll accept me, and you'll bring me back, and I'm always going to be part of the Holy Family.